ancient corporate rages flee so fast their tails between their legs. Not pretty much be long and short head. Well, as long as you keep him well. By the by, you seen that Aquaman film? Aye, twer a right royal romp, and no mistake. Yar, but these shores be far too packed with plunderers for it to be gallivanting your studio for review. Ah, uh, such is life. Aye. Till next we speak then, good master. Alright then, speak soon. So long, buddy. Welcome to my house of love! Now, I had planned to leave it a little while longer before returning to the DC Cinematic Universe, but it has been an interesting couple of years, so I've decided to throw caution to the wind and introduce you all to a rip-roaring adventure with a surprisingly retro feel in today's subject, Aquaman! Released in 2018, Aquaman is, as the title suggests, all about the amazing half-Atlantean himself, and his quest to stop his crazy half-brother from declaring war on the surface world. Coming to us in the wake of the theatrical Justice League, could this be a marine world of awesome, or simply a wet fish? There's only one way to find out! A word of warning though to those of you in the first three rows, Put on your ponchos, cause you will get wet. So come with me, esteemed audience, on an outrageous globe-trotting adventure with... Aquaman! It was a dark and stormy night in 1985 when Thomas Curry found a mysterious woman on the rocks by his lighthouse. This is Atlanta. She fled an arranged marriage to Orvax, seeking her own destiny which apparently went about as well as you'd expect. And as time went by, they fell in love. A love which produced a son. But the forces of Atlantis eventually found her, though she swore to return. But many years later, the jealous king learned of her firstborn and exiled her, seemingly killing her. But we'll get to that. Cut to the present day, and a criminal gang are raiding a submarine. But they didn't reckon with a half-Atlantean hero. And he's spoiling for a tussle. And so, the crew are rescued. But there be consequences for crossing a pirate. Which don't compare to the wrath of an Aquaman. Jesse Kane was a second-generation pirate, and his son David is turning into quite the heir. But David Kane will never forget the day that he met Aquaman. And ever since the day that his love returned to the sea, Tom Curry has kept a dawn vigil. And occasionally he's rewarded with a visit from his son. But beneath the ocean, the kingdoms of Greater Atlantis discuss the matter of war against the surface. When suddenly, a submarine attacks! Hmm... Now isn't that convenient that they know the exact time and place of this meeting, and have orders to fire on them? Kane again. That's why their gang were attacking the sub. Back on the surface, Princess Mera tries to convince Arthur to join the fight. Which succeeds, but not before a giant tidal wave almost kills Papa Tom. So it's off to Atlantis to receive the quest. Volko, vizier to the king, has discovered the last message of the first king of Atlantis, Atlan, which Volko believes will lead to Atlan's trident which Arthur will need in order to convince Atlantis that he's any kind of kingly material. Except that it isn't quite that easy. And Arthur is brought before the King of Atlantis, and unwisely challenges him. 
which goes about as well as you'd expect, prompting Mera to step in with the getaway vehicle. And while she is a damn good pilot, King Orm won't be denied. Now, I would do the slow motion fake out thing, but you see our heroes escape, and you, the audience, are probably already tired of it, so let's just move on. And their apparent deaths grant them a little time to find the final message of King Atlan, in the middle of the Sahara. But a civilization did once exist here, and our heroes behold the final message of King Atlan, which leads them to Sicily, and their next heading, and an entire mess of trouble as well. Behold, Black Manta! Kane was given special experimental weapons and armour from Atlantis, which he modified. The helmet is that size, because it ripped apart a smaller helmet. But our heroes manage to hold their own, and even come out on top. So it's off to find the trident, which leads our heroes to the trench, a horrifying realm of feral, bestial creatures. But at its centre lies an impossible paradise. And a seemingly impossible reunion. Yes, Atlanta survived her exile to the trench, and has lived there ever since. Well, it's not like you could get back. Even so, there's still the little matter of a legendary monster that guards the trident. But Arthur convinces the beast to relent with his words. And so the stage is set for an all-out slobberknocker as the first battle of the war unfolds. And Aquaman makes a grand entrance, riding the Carathen. But the only way to stop this war for good is to beat Orm. And the best way to do that is to take the fish out of water. So yeah, they fight, Arthur wins. And Aquaman spares Ocean Master's life. And so our movie ends with Thomas Curry's vigil finally rewarded as the love of his life returns. So that was Aquaman. And I am definitely putting this one into my house of love. I love this movie. It's big, it's loud, it's filled with fighting and explosions and legendary larger-than-life characters. But at its core, there's a love story that makes the whole movie possible. Because it's all about a lighthouse keeper that fell in love with a refugee from under the sea. And without that, there'd only be an ocean master and another job for Superman. Much as he could stop it. But let's get to the performances, such as they are. Because Jason Momoa is Aquaman. A hulking bruiser that learns the virtue of mercy over the course of the movie, but also learns the cast iron lesson that there's always a bigger fish. And if I could sum up Amber Heard's Mera in one word, it would be emotional. Which is no bad thing, because the character has every right to them, siding with this lunk-headed, land-raised, half-breed no-hoper who brings a world of trouble with him, but maybe the only hope to avoiding all-out war. And she certainly nails the action beats, but more on that later. Patrick Wilson's King Orm, the main villain, is once again a slight presence, though less ephemeral, as simply pushed into the background by the story. But then, it isn't entirely his story, and where we see him, he's a stoic, driven monarch, single-minded in his, somewhat justified, quest for vengeance on the polluters of the land. And let's not forget secondary villain Black Manta, as portrayed by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, whose tragic tale plays out across this movie, though his performance is more menace and vengeance, an Ahab of a different stripe, seeking to take down his own white whale. And we can't leave out talking about the stellar supporting cast, Temuera Morrison's Thomas Curry, Nicole Kidman's Queen Atlanta, Willem Dafoe's Volko, the Royal Vizier, Dolph Lundgren as the King of Zebel Nereus, all of whom are spot on, though I must give special mention to how Kidman radiates serenity. Which brings us to the action. This movie is a proper superhero blockbuster. Fists and feet fly, stuff blows up, and there's a massive battle at the climax. And apart from the first and final fights, of course, our hero gets his backside handed to him pretty much the entire time. But then, he's no Superman. And the score! Synthesizer and orchestra in perfect harmony, in a way that the 80s never managed. And the flow is smooth enough, though we necessarily need to cut between characters at some points. 
But the high point for me is when the camera pans from one fight to the other in the Sicily scenes, which heightens the drama and really brings home the proximity of these two predicaments. So is it a perfect movie? No. If I had to pick a flaw, I would point to the character of Dr. Stephen Shin, who is clearly being set up for a bigger role in the sequel. But I'm nitpicking. This is pure 80s Hollywood in the modern day, and I love it. Hail to the King! I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks! Hey folks, Funky again. If you liked the video, you know where that button is. Why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!